Now up there is a relic stand of Pinus muricata bishop pines. It's highly disjunct, meaning the closest stand is probably a couple hundred miles away. So uh, we're gonna go up there, we're gonna look at, you could see him up there nice, clinging onto the the uh, little north uh, northeast facing uh, side of this mountain over there. This is pretty nice too. Look at all this, the Lagenella cinerescence. That's a Baja endemic. This was dry last time I was out here. It was all gray. Now it's gotten some moisture. It's juiced back up, coming to life. Once it dries out again in a couple months, it'll all be gray again. Just the whole carpet of that. He's done. I was worried he wasn't gonna make it, you know, because I picked the hardest way possible to get up here. But, uh, but he's fine, you know. He's fine. Now where's the Dino Thamnus? It's gotta be here somewhere. Metavolcanic rocks in you. Look at it, you can see some of the uh, wonderful plastic agriculture that has made the region uh, so bleak in many respects. Jesus Christ, I think I'm gonna keel over. So anyway, the important question to ask is why did these pines get stuck here? Why were they able to hang on in this area you know, the idea being that they were formerly once more very widespread, probably during the Pleistocene, when the climate was more amenable to them. And, uh, you know, they went from all the way up in Northern California down and to some of the islands uh, off the coast of Baja. But now in the mainland, they're extinct everywhere but here, at least within the geopolitical boundary known is uh, Baja California. Look at this nice little, look at this cute little lupin. There's about a million species of those. And uh, I haven't bothered to really differentiate between any of them. Okay, just a little bit far. Look at that, it's one of the 97 taxa of Arctostaphylos, aka the Manzanita. With its nascent inflorescences. See, it's surprised it hasn't flowered yet. These normally flower pretty early. <coughs> <laughs> oh God, Jesus Christ! Look at that, but no, uh, very uh, glabrous, no hairs. Some dead bishop pines, Pinus muricata. This is very peculiar. I got no idea what this could be. This might be a local uh, and them. Oh, this one, this one feels a little bit different though. This might be a different species. This seems to have hairs on it. There you go, looking north. There they are, Pinus muricata. Southern disjunct population. A couple hundred miles away from the nearest one. And then of course, over there you got the Pacific Ocean. God, I almost died getting up there. Almost fell over. It was a strenuous uphill hike. Then you got Adenostoma, Rosaceae, Rose family. Eriodictyon sessilifolium, Melosma lorina, and you got some little Sylvia munzii and uh, Dendromicon regida. <clears throat> oh, look, it's a uh, Mimulus, uh, looks like a Punicius down there. So verdant, so nice. Oh, look at all that Aesculus perii, too, the dwarf buckeye. Of course, the substrate is a uh, very strange here, a lovely substrate. Metavolcanic, it's a tortured volcanic rock. There was volcanism and then there was metamorphism. The Placus uh, Punicius, the artist formerly known as Mimulus, the monkey flowers. You could get into these too, there's a lot of nice, a lot of diversity, a lot of radiation. Some of the desert ones are really nice too, they don't get too big, they only get like that big, but they got wild looking flowers. They look like uh, crackhead rat fink eyes, all bloodshot. The uh, markations on the uh, Corolla. Xylococcus bicolor. What the hell is this? It's like a wood rat pile. Somebody made a burn pile or some shit. Who knows? So there's the cones on Pinus Miracata, and you can tell they stay closed uh, years 
for years after they mature. It's because they need fire to open. You can see why I ripped one off. These things will tear your hands up, so you got to use a rag. Uh, preferably gloves would be nice, but I don't have any. So it's important to propagate this species and distribute it to arboretums and botanic gardens should this whole population ever suffer a massive fire uh, such as uh, the, the Takati cypress grove just a few miles south of here. It's called ex situ conservation. I need to go ex situ conserve some goddamn carne set of tacos in my stomach after this because I broke my ass getting up that hill. Now, I'm going to tell you something about manzanitas, okay? First off, they're a pain in the ass. Without a flower, uh, you know, the diagnostic factors are presence of a burl or not, which can be hard to see if there's a bunch of leaf litter and other, other bullshit down there. I can't even tell if this has a burl or not. It doesn't look like it. Normally, it'll look kind of mounded, you know? Like a, like, a, like a little bulb, but uh, this doesn't have it. Other things to pay attention to without flowers are does it have hairs on the stem or not? This does not have hairs. It's a very glabrous one. It's very smooth. Okay, there's no hairs on the leaves. Another thing they talk about is isofa or isofacial or bifacial leaves. That is, does it have uh, stomata uh, on the leaves? But that's basically like giving this plant a rectal exam. It's looking way too close. You know, and if you got to get that close... Well, I mean, I would do it, but you don't, it's a pain in the ass. You need like a hand lens or a stereoscope or something. Now, there's two species here. There's this one, which I find very uh, charming. It's got these red margins on the leaves. Then there's another one uh, that's got, um, it's somewhat tomentose. It's, uh, it's got fuzzy, uh, <coughs> oh, God, it's got fuzzy, uh, fuzzy stems and fuzzy leaves. So it's got them hairs. And it doesn't have that red margin. It doesn't look anywhere near uh, as glabrous. Now, why, you might be asking, is it important to pay attention to minute details like this? Well, if you're an asshole, it may not be. But to me, well, I'm an asshole too. But to me, it's important because manzanitas are still speciating. They're still radiating. A lot of them are very promiscuous. They hybridize. And just evolutionarily, it's very fascinating to look at because you can basically see evolution in action. You know, how recently uh, did they speciate? How recently did they diverge, etc.? And And I like that. I like looking at that kind of thing. I think it's pretty nice. I think it's pretty fascinating. So what is this? This is that same one. I'm going to see if I can find you one of these fuzzy bastards over here. In fact, I think this is them because a lot of them look like hell. I don't know what's going on or why there's all this dieback, if they got some Phytophthora or something or what. But, uh, or maybe it's just the, it's been a rough couple years. Let's look at this one real quick. Yeah, see this, the texture on this, is the leaves are kind of like sandpaper. Nowhere near as smooth. These, uh, this species generally looks a lot more like shit than that one over there. So it's hard to tell without flowers, but you're looking at two different species here. Let's see if you can get up there close. You can see they got tiny, tiny hairs on that stem and tiny hairs on those leaves. And then, of course, another thing to pay attention to is these bracts right here, which is interesting. It's almost like xylococcus bracts. You got them bracts on a new growth. And I didn't see too much of that. I guess they got a little bit of that on that one. Anyway, back down at the uh, uh, western side, the sun-facing side of the uh, Bishop Pine Grove, at least the, the hot sun, that afternoon sun. What is that guy doing up there? Maybe he's pissed that I'm here. Anyway, these look like hell. These ones. They're not. The cones are very shriveled and gray. These are very stunted. Uh, you got to remember, this is you're getting into the desert now. The further south you go, these have got to be getting cooked in the summer. So, uh, you know, that's something to, to think about too. As climate change progresses, you know, as things, as the heat ramps up. Uh, this population might go extinct in the next century. It's very possible. You can already see they're just clinging on to this little nook, this little crevice, little V-shaped crevice that's facing the uh, northeast, you know, where they can uh, kind of hide out from the, the hotter, drier effects of uh, this area. Look at that. You could always already see evidence of a range contraction. Look at those, look at those dead, dead guys over there. Dead Pinus muricata. They can't hang on even on the east side anymore. They got to be, well, I guess that was south facing. It's a little south facing, a little hot. They got to be all the way on the north side. 
where it's a little bit uh, a little bit cooler anyway who knows who knows if they'll make it to 2100